day to be in the house of the Lord. Are you with me? Amen. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Hi. Hi. What's your name? I almost didn't make it up here. I was uh, I was blasting it was off. Incredible. My name's Worship. Mike. Nice to meet you. Hi, and I'm Gabriella. Thank you guys for joining us today. If you guys want to take, if you're new here and you want to take about 60 seconds, fill out the seat, the card in the seat back in front of you and bring it to our welcome center. We have a gift for you and we just want to get to know you. Yeah, we do. And we have a gift and we want to just force a gift upon you. Please, <laughs> let us give you a gift. Um, hey guys, we've got VBS starting Woo! tomorrow. <laughs> it's a big deal around here. It's a big deal. It's a big deal for me because yeah. I'm sending two yep. of my kids to VBS all week. It's awesome. But um, <laughs> It's, it is especially special because um, for me personally, my son has gone the last couple years. Yeah. Just last year, he was up here on stage. Um, he was putting his hands up, worshiping, wow. giving his life to God. Uh, Amen. And it was just really something special to see, watching the, the transformation of his little, little heart. Um, really something amazing. So, hey, guess what? It's not too late to sign up, and you could sign up right now. Actually, at victory.org slash VBS, we have about 90 kids right now. We'd love to get to 100. So if you're on the fence, go to victory.org slash VBS, or you can go out to the front left right by the welcome area, and you can sign up and get yourself a free moon pie, awesome. which would be just yummy right now, but <laughs> not for me. I'm on a diet. Sick. Also, on June 24th, guess yep. what we have? I don't... We have Go Love Day. <laughs> Go Love Day. So one of our missions here is to bring the heart of God to everyone everywhere yep. and for them to experience the fullness of life. Yes. And with that, we are able to do that with Go Love. We yeah, spread love, love around the community, and it's just such a beautiful thing. So yep. if you want to join and sign up uh, for Go Love Day, go to victory.org slash go love. Yeah, what an amazing time that is when we yeah. just go around the community. It's so, so cool. So good. Um, so we did launch summer small groups, guys, just yesterday. Anybody in a summer small group? Woo! Okay, thank goodness. Thought maybe nobody was going to yell. That was going to just make me feel really alone up here. But <laughs> no, we have summer small groups starting, guys. We've got a couple groups, actually. We had one that launched yesterday. We also have a Zoom group for college students. So if you're here for the summer and maybe you want to just dip your toe in the water, I very highly recommend you check that out. Now, just remember, too, like this is where our community yes. comes from, right? I mean, anybody that's ever been in a small group here, you know that, number one, it's where you make friends. Yes. Number two, it's where you come to here on Sunday and you see those faces that you recognize recognize and you get to talk to those people that you've met and been open with and it's really something something special it's truly where i met my family yeah yeah, yeah. for sure for sure so uh victory.org slash groups sign up and see what we have to offer for all of this and more please go to our social platforms on instagram youtube and facebook yep. at victory church fl yes thank you thanks gab you're awesome give it up for gab yep thank you thank you gab so I'm going to move us into our time of offering, and what I want to highlight today is uh, the, the youth trip that the, uh, the, yeah, the youth just got back from. Yep. Yeah, come on. Come on. Uh, so they went to um, Lakeland and uh, to Nova Southeastern University. Um, about, uh, just under 40 youth, I keep saying youth, kids, whatever you want to call them, you know, yourselves, youth. About 40 youth went to um, this, uh, this camp, and there was about 800 total there. Um, and I was talking to Pastor Eli about this because when I saw him today, he was looking tired. He had a long week, <laughs> staying up late and doing that, doing the youth thing. But I was asking him, I said, hey, what was the highlight? What was the thing that you, that you saw that was like just absolutely, you know, awesome? And what he said was the most amazing thing was watching the transformation of the hearts and minds of those kids from Monday to Friday. So on Monday, there were some kids that were there that were very open about the fact that they didn't want to be there. They, they, their parents sent them here. Uh, they had no, you know, they didn't have any friends there. They don't like anybody, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and then by Friday, those same kids were laying hands on, on others. They were praying for others. They were, they were worshiping. And they were giving their lives to Christ, which was the, really the main purpose of the whole entire thing. And so of those 40, uh, we actually were able to sponsor a couple of those kids uh, due to the generosity of this church. So those were, a couple, those were a couple kids that maybe weren't able to go, but through your generosity and your giving, we were able to send them. And so they were able to have that transformational experience. So pretty amazing stuff. So if you want to be a part of uh, the journey that we're on, guys, uh, to bring the heart of God to everyone everywhere, there's a couple ways you can do it. Number one, victory.org slash give. You can give right on the website. Number two um, is the giving envelopes that are in the seat back in front of you. You can fill those out and drop them um, in the boxes on the way out. Uh, you could also download the Church Center app and you could give there. You could also download the Your Change app, which you've heard me mention before. Really cool app that we use. 
that allows you to just very easily and automatically round up your transactions and give those to Victory Church without you even having to pay attention. Um, so do what uh, the Lord directs you on that, and let me pray for us. God, we're thankful for those who give. We pray that you multiply your giving, God, for your good. We're so thankful today, God, that we were able to send those youth to uh, youth camp and that they were able to come back safe, refreshed, restored with a new heart um, and a new vision for you, God. And we know that through all things, we can do anything through you. And it's in your mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. So um, you may remember from last week, uh, Pastor Donnie uh, preached on 1 Corinthians 13, 13, which says, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. So today we have a special today we have a special message coming from Pastor Donnie here on the screen that's going to really punctuate that ghosted series talking about love. So turn your eyes to the screen for a message from Pastor Donnie. Hey everybody and welcome to Victory Church. My name is Donnie. I'm the lead pastor here and it's been my honor and privilege really to serve in this role. I realize now for we're coming up on nine months. And so church, I love you. I'm praying for you. And it's my honor, my privilege to serve you. We're in the final week of our I Want to Know What Love Is series. And let me give you a quick recap. Well, number one is uh, love is supernatural. We kicked off from the very beginning. We said, let's get this right. Let's get this first. Love is supernatural. It comes from God. God created all things. He created humanity with the capacity to experience love out of the overflow of the love of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Week two is love is sacred. And then week three was that love is sacrificial. And we're gonna close it out this week in our final message for the series on love is strong. What I want you to get, what I want you to see is that number one, love is supernatural, is facing God. Number two, Love is sacred, is facing culture. Three, love is sacrificial, is facing each other. And now week four, love is strong, is facing the future. Because of the fact that love is strong, we can face the future with confidence. I'm gonna show you why, I'm gonna show you how. Our anchor verse for this whole series is Ephesians chapter three, verses 14 through 17, which says, for this reason, I bow my knees before the father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. That according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened. Come on, someone say strengthened. With power, someone say power. Through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Every time I read that, I love that because I say what that is showing us is that somehow by only the spirit of God, we can know the unknowable. We can somehow comprehend the incomprehensible, which is the vast, great, strong love of God. It's by the power of the Holy Spirit. You are rooted and grounded in love. You are, I am. I don't know who you think you are. I don't know what somebody told you that you were. I don't know how you might be feeling about yourself right now, but I am reminded one of the covenant names of God is Jehovah Sidkenu, which means he is the God who imputes to us righteousness through Jesus. So no matter what anybody says, you are, I am the righteousness of God. Nothing and no one can take that away. By faith in Jesus Christ, we are the righteousness of God. And friends, we are rooted and we are grounded, nothing can change that. Come on, would you pray with me as we get into this message? God, I pray for a revelation from you, God. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would help people to experience the real thing. We don't wanna just talk about you. We don't wanna just study you from afar, God. We wanna be face to face with you. We wanna experience you. We want to have the revelation that we are rooted and grounded in your love and that by your grace, we are the righteousness of God in Jesus. And it's in Jesus' name we pray and everybody said, amen. amen. Love is strong. Someone say love is strong. Love is strong. Love is strong. It's strong like like this trunk right here. It's strong. 
it's strong. This trunk is a couple hundred years old. It's been through some things. It's, it's seen some things. It's endured some things, but it's still here and it's still strong. The reality is I might have cried more writing this message than almost any message uh, that I can remember because love is strong, because I've tasted and I've seen that love is strong. My mind went back to um, several months ago, I was in Nashville. I was at a leadership thing and I heard Andy Crouch, um, just a great cultural thought leader and believer and author, and he was telling us about something. He's a guy who's maybe in his, in his mid-50s, and we were just learning from him. And he said, um, he said, I'm a part of a friend group. We call ourselves the seven eulogists. It's seven men that have made a deep commitment and deep promise to each other where they said, no matter what happens, we're finishing out this life together connected. They said that, we are going to be in each other's lives, praying for each other, talking to each other every single week. They said once a year, they come together, they go on a retreat. And the rule is that every single guy has to share everything. The good, the bad, the ugly, what's going on with their lives, their marriages, their kids, mistakes they've made, regrets they have or whatever. And that no matter what, nobody in that group is turning their back on the other person. In fact, they said that no matter what, they have made a deep commitment to each other that they are going to give the eulogies at each other's funerals. When I think about that, it wells up something inside of me and how we long for connection and communion and that we can somehow have that with people is by the gift and the grace of God. I mean, these men said it doesn't matter what you say or what you do, you could change your belief system. You can change your religion. You can whatever, no matter what, we're speaking at each other's funerals. And it just touched me. It also made me think back to a time that I had a really hard time in my marriage back in in 2015. I'm not even gonna front. I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna be fake with you. Uh, We almost didn't make it. We went through some hard things. We had to dig really, really deep. You see, my wife and I, man, we're we're middle school sweethearts. And when things got shaky and when I talked about last week, limerence, right? And I talked about maybe a lot of our early relationship was built on, on, on passion and hormones and all of that, right? And then, but some things got real and we had to go, is this going to be a mature love? Is this going to be a strong love? Is this going to be a love that that we choose, not just that we enjoy feeling? And I'll come back to that, more on that at the end of my message. But what I wanna remind you is that you are rooted and that you are grounded. 1 Corinthians 13 says that love endures all things. It endures. I wanna ask you this question. How can it endure unless there's pressure. Things that don't have pressure don't endure anything. And so this is my first point. I got five points today. I wanna encourage you to write them down. It's gonna help you remember them. It's gonna help you apply them. Write this down. Number one is what isn't tested isn't strong. What isn't tested isn't strong. It's still in theory. It's still a good idea. It's maybe still just a feeling or a thought. But if it's not tested, it's not strong. Last week, we joked about Jack and Rose on the Titanic and how that was like, they weren't in love. Sorry, they were in limerence. And come on, we all know, we saw it evidenced. There was plenty of room for him on that door. But that's not what I'm talking about today. Coming back to the Titanic, around the Titanic, there was a lot of bravado around that ship. There was a lot of press around that ship. It boasted its strength but it wasn't prepared. It wasn't tested. There weren't enough lifeboats on that ship. What isn't tested isn't strong. I don't care what you say. I don't care what the press says. I don't care what you share on social media. I don't care what you want people to think. If it's not tested, it's not strong. 
It's just words. And we need more than words. You see, 1 John 3 says this, by this we know love, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. This is the thing. Anyone can say anything. We got a lot of words. We got a lot of theories. I mean, in, in, our, in our vows, it's for better or worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health. But a lot of times stuff is just talk. It's just, what about when, there, when, it, when you are poorer? What about when there is sickness? What about when it is for worse? Talk is cheap. I'm talking about the real thing. That's not how love works. Love follows through. Love follows through. I don't know about you, but I've tested God's love. I have made mistakes that have tested God's love. I have done some things that I'm not proud of that I've peeked and said, is it, but is it real? I've tasted and I've seen that the Lord is good and that it shifted from theory to actuality, to practicality, the real thing. And I just wanna say to somebody today, because you might be in a place where you feel completely overwhelmed. You might be in a place where you're like, I, I don't know how to go on. I just, I just, I can't see it. I don't want to. I'm just ready to throw in the towel. Man, I don't know, I'm done, I'm out. How in the world could I possibly go on? Let me tell you how. Love. Love is undergirding you. Love is strengthening you. Love has you rooted and grounded and your best days are right ahead of you. I'm telling you this, I'm telling you this right now that love has you, love is holding you. So that first thing that I didn't want you to forget is that what isn't tested isn't strong. The second thing is this, love never leaves. It never leaves. That trunk represents love for us today. It's there. It's just been sitting there. It's right there. It's endured. It's been through a lot of things. We know that God is love. And Hebrews 13 tells us, let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Come on, I will not fear. He makes us a promise. He says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. What can man do to me? What, can I, what do I have to be afraid of? Who or what? What thing? What stock market? What boss? What job? What relationship? No, no, no. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And you might say right now, you're like, pastor, well, I'm a little confused. Are you, so are you talking about God's love? Or are you talking about our love? Because I don't know, how was God's love? Is that, uh, here's my answer. Yes. Yes. We first and foremost experience the love of God. We let the love of God in. We let it change us. And we go and we love the same. By grace, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we ex what we experience, we then dish out to the world. Love is sacred and love is sacrificial. And friends, love is strong. Remember in this second point, we're talking about love and how it never leaves. First Corinthians 13 says this, love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, love never fails. Allow me to just give this, this brief disclaimer so that you don't hear what I'm not saying. If you're in a relationship that is clearly abusive physically, and if you are unsafe physically, emotionally, I'm not telling you, hey, you're just a 
Stick it out, man. Hang in there. Endure. No, I'm saying run for the hills. I'm saying, I'm saying that you may need to get some help. You may need to let some people in. You need to make yourself safe. So don't apply this in a way that I'm not talking about. But what I am, but what I am saying is that I'm a little bit concerned that sometimes too much, we are so quick to even call something and someone abuse because it just doesn't feel good to me. It's like, man, I don't really like that. This, re- this requires some strengthening in me. This requires me to stay when it would be easier for me to just run out. That's not what I'm talking about. Those are fickle feelings and emotions, friends, and they are not serving us or our society well. Love is strong and love never leaves. You hear what I'm saying? Come on. Deuteronomy 7, 9 says, know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. Is anybody grateful for that? Can we just thank him right now that he keeps his promise? He keeps his covenant. That's who he is. That's the God that we serve. Here's my third point. Write this one down. This is gonna be a fun one. Love provides what you need when you need it. I said, love provides what you need when you need it. Philippians 4, 19 says, and my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. So watch this. Love provides what you need in every season. Love is like the thread that runs through every season providing you what you need. Let's see in this trunk, that represents love, what am I talking about here? What does love have for me? You know what? You may go through some times where God is providing something for you. Love is providing something for you that you don't even know why or what in the world is this? I don't know that. Okay, let me just, God's given me something. Let me see what it's about. I'll put it on, I'll, I'll, you know, or they, oof, there we go. Or they say, uh, if the shoe fits, right? So if the shoe, let me put this on. I'm not quite sure why I got this in this season. These things might represent, you heard something in your small group that really seemed to resonate with the person next to you, but it didn't so much with you. It just kind of was like a good idea. It was like a good theory. Like love never leaves. Like love is strong and sacrificial. Okay, or that love will cover me or love is my shelter. I'm not quite sure. That's a good idea, but I don't know. But then you may have heard it said that uh, when it rains, it pours. And so you, maybe there's a little stuff going on and you're like, I'm not so sure. I don't really like this. I'm going through a hard time right now. My boss is, I'm, I'm scared I'm gonna lose my job. Uh, my, my relationship is fickle. My, I don't think this thing is gonna make it. And so when it rains, it pours. It's one thing after the other. You could endure it at first, but now it's just madness. It's utter chaos. And you're going, hold on a second, hold on a second. Maybe I remember what love provided for me. I remember the truth. I remember the promise. I remember when that pastor said that love covers over me. I remember when the Bible told me that he will be my shelter in time of need. And you remember it then. And then the rain lets up. And I sort of make it through that season I'm like, okay, I made it. That was good. Now it makes a little bit more sense why love gave me what I needed even when I didn't exactly understand why. And so now everything is good, right? Wrong. I live in South Florida and it's almost hurricane season. So now it's madness. Now I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do. And oh, here's the money from last week. Ah, hold on. What's in here? Okay, I gotta tell you, no matter what you do, You do not want to go outside. It is dangerous out there. I repeat, stay inside. Stay inside. Don't come out. What am I going to do? Hold on. How about that? Okay. I don't know what this season represents for you, but this season might represent chaos and anxiety and change. I don't know about you, but I don't like change. I'm not a fan. It makes me feel unstable. It kind of makes it feel like I don't have my footing, so I don't know what to do. But I remember this, that Jesus said, 
Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock and the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And in hurricanes and thunderstorms cause power outages. And so I'm rummaging around in this trunk. And what is it? What is it? Is there anything in here for me now if love provides what I need when I need it? Okay. Okay. And I'm not sure what the season of darkness represents for you but it might be despair and it might be depression and it might be an inability to see the future. It might be even a lack of desire to even want to see the future. But I'm reminded Micah 7, 8 says, do not gloat over me, my enemy. Though I have fallen, I will rise. Though I sit in darkness, the Lord will be my light. I remember Psalm 119 says, your word is a lamp into my feet and a light into my path. And so love has had so much for me in every season. It was my shield in a hurricane, crazy chaos season. And it was, shelter in a season of rain and maybe tears and just sadness and this jacket's not coming off. But maybe in the trunk you find a big old jacket because you're going through a cold season. I said you're going through a season where your heart is maybe bitter and what was once soft and warm is now hard and cold. And this might represent despair. This might represent anger. This might represent bitterness. I remember what C.S. Lewis said about Narnia. He said, he said, when it's always winter but never Christmas, that might be what it feels like to you. Or I remember when he's talking about Aslan, who represents the lion, who represents Jesus, he says, wrong will be right when Aslan comes in sight. At the sound of his roar, sorrows will be no more. When he bears his teeth, winter meets its death. And when he shakes his mane, we shall have spring again. And I am thankful that that is over. And... In South Florida, your spring means, man, I'm going to the beach. (laughs) So what do we got in here? Because here's the idea, friends. It's not all, it's not all chaos and pain seasons, right? I mean, after all, there we go. There we go. Uh, don't mind me, just a weirdo wearing a <laughs> rain boots and weather jacket. And this is Kool Aid. Calm down. I mean, after all, Psalm 23, it does say that he leads me besides the still waters and he restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Right? And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, though I walk through crazy seasons, I'll fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And you anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You see, love provided for me what I needed in every season. No matter what it is that you're facing. 
And we've got to get this in our spirits because a lot of times we think that other things are what is going to provide for us. But friends, no, it is the love of God. Because after all of that, after each one of those chaos seasons and chaotic seasons and stormy seasons, after all that, love remains. Just like it always has. Just like it did in the very beginning of this message. It hasn't moved. And that is why Jesus says to us, do not worry. Who can add but a single hour to his life by worrying? I got you. I got you. Maybe everyone else runs out on you. Maybe everyone else betrays you. Maybe you can't shake that addiction. Maybe you don't find that physical healing. Maybe you don't get that job that you wanted. Maybe that person doesn't call you back. Love will provide for you what you need in every season. In every season. Love remains. Hebrews 12 says everything that can be shaken will be shaken. And 1 Corinthians 13 says, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Here's my fourth point, write it down, I gotta move. Love is undefeated. Song of Solomon 8, six through seven says, set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm. For love is as strong as death, jealousy as cruel as the grave. Its flames are flames of fire, a most vehement flame. Many waters cannot quench love, nor can the floods drown it. You thought there was gonna be a flood that was gonna come now, right? I know, no, we got, we're done with that. Because of this truth, love is undefeated. That's how strong it is. You can face the future, friend. You can. You can have a confidence that your best days are ahead of you. Because come what may, love will stay. Love never leaves. Love provides what you need in every single season. Love is undefeated. Romans 8 says, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Can somebody just give him praise for that right now? Come on, right where you are at, he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. His love is infinitely stronger than anything that you have ever faced or anything that you are facing now or anything you will face in the future. Love is strong so we can face the future. Come on, somebody. So here's my fifth and final point. I'm gonna close with this. Love, I wish this is the best takeaway from this whole series, man. This is it at the end. Love is the most important thing. Are you sure, pastor? I don't know, are you sure? Like, I don't know, this, I don't know, you, you, God loves me, and I don't, it feels like, can you just preach a little bit deeper maybe for me? I'm not so sure. A lot of times what people mean when they say that is like, can you just confuse me? Confuse me enough into inaction. So I don't have to do anything, I could just feel good. No, the Bible says that knowledge puffs up, but that love edifies or love builds up. Our church is founded on our first value is that we love God and that we love people. Why? Not because it was our good idea or my dad's construct, but because Jesus, when he was asked, what is the greatest commandment? He said, it's to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. So make no mistake, friends, love is the most important thing. 1 Corinthians 13 says, if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but I have not love, I'm just a noisy, annoying, stupid gong, I added that, or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And it goes on to say that love never fails. He's been faithful before in every season the thread that runs through every season, the thing that provides me what I need when I need it. 
And so we can look to the future with utmost confidence because come what may, love will stay. And back to my marriage. I told you in the beginning. Hey, by God's grace, we made it. Things weren't easy. I'm not gonna front. It took a lot of prayer. It took a lot of counsel. It took some friends. And although we, this is, the, this is, this is what hit me. Although we had to dig deep, although my bride had to dig deep, although I had to say, it's time for me to grow up and stop being a boy and, and be a man. Although all of that, I see it now. I see it. Do you see it, babe? That it wasn't just willpower and that it wasn't just a choice. That was all necessary but it was love greater than what you and I could do on our own held us together. It is love for Ecclesiastes says, though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Love undergirds you. Love undergirds me. Love undergirds and is constant in every season, providing us what we need when we need it. You see, friends, God has been there all along. You think you were strong enough? You think you were smart enough? You think you just white knuckled through it? You think that you just figured it out and that you used willpower? No, 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 no. It was God that has never left you, that has never forsaken you, that has always been more than enough for you. It is his love that is strong. It always has been. It always will be. It will never leave. Somebody say amen. Come on. God is your helper. I want you to remember this, those five things. What isn't tested isn't strong. Love never leaves. Love provides what you need when you need it. Love is undefeated. And love is the most important thing. My friends, God's love for us has been tested. It is strong and it can be trusted. So let's let our love be strong. Let me just pray for us right now. God, I pray for that revelation. I pray that this would be, this message would be, it will have been more than a good time and some cool special effects things, but God, that we would remember that you are always with us and your promise that you never leave us, that you never forsake us, that your love is strong, that your love is enough. And Lord, I pray for anybody right now that maybe does not know that love, that does not know that, that you created them on purpose and with a purpose out of the overflow of love. And that even when they messed everything up, because we all have, we all sin and we all fall short, that you made a way for us to be reconciled, to be covered. You are our shelter through your love. And so everybody here under the sound of my voice, I'm gonna lead you in a prayer right now. If you just wanna accept that free gift of God's love and salvation, I'm gonna lead you in this prayer and I want you to repeat this out loud after me. Come on, say, dear God, I believe that you love me and that you sent your son Jesus to die for me. I repent of my sin and I give it to you because Jesus's sacrifice was enough. And God, from this day forward, you're my father and I'm your child. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said, amen. Hey, I pray that what you remember from this whole series is that, check it out, love is supernatural. That love is sacred. That love is sacrificial. And that, come on somebody, love is strong. Someone say love is strong. Love is strong. It's with you in every season. So here's what I want you to do. Come on and stand to your feet right now. We're just gonna respond to this love. We're just gonna worship God right now. We're gonna run to the Father because after all, God is love. Come on, let's just worship and thank Him together.
right, Victory Church. Anybody get anything out of that message today? All right, all right. Well, listen, um, if you prayed that prayer, we believe it was one of the most, the best decision that you could ever make. Maybe you prayed that prayer for the first time today. If so, we would love to connect with you. Take 60 seconds, fill out a connect card there in the seat back in front of you, and bring it over to our welcome area over here, or you could bring it up to the prayer partners here at the front. We'd love to pray for you, love to get to know you, love to connect with you. Um, and if you're online, you can also type I Decided in the comments. We'd love to reach out to you. Now, if you need prayer for anything today, guys, we have prayer partners, like I said, right up here, up front. Just come on up, uh, and we'd love to be here for you. And so I hope you have an amazing Sunday. Remember, you matter. We care. Jesus loves you.